everyone. Let's talk about phytoplasma diseases for the plant. I would like to give you an overview about plant pathogens. We all know the first criminal is the fungi. Based on the symptoms, it's not that difficult to identify. They normally have really dry lesion with a defined border. And then sometimes you can see the visible hyphae, those fluffy uh, hyphae on the top of the leaves. Sometimes they can produce fruiting body and then cankers on the trunk. So this is antragonose, curling, dry lesions, powder mildew, very powdery and fluffy fungal structure growing. See, not too bad, <clears throat> not too hard for identifying fungi. The second one is bacteria. I give the treats of bacterial disease as slimy, smelly, wet, without defined border, oozing or frothing cankers, and sometimes bacteria can cause galls. Those are two examples, soft raw on the potato and uh, fruit blotch of the cucurbits. They are very smelly, trust me. They're way much more stinky than the fungal rot. The third one is virus. Their symptoms are very visible, normally colored with modeling or mosaic pattern or distorted tissues. Here are the two examples, the tobacco mosaic virus on puny, which I received a sample last year. The second one is tomato spot wheel virus. That's not hard, right? We have fungi, we have bacteria, we have virus. So what is phytoplasma? So phytoplasma is a bacteria-like organism that lack cell walls. They're not easy to be identified because they only survive on and reproduce in the living plant. That means we cannot capture that on plates. This is one critical part of my diagnosis. I need to isolate the pathogen and grow on the media and look at it on a micro microscope or use a molecular acid to identify that. But I cannot do that for this specific organism because they can only live on the living tissue. One method to identify that is use the electron microscope to determine whether it is a phytoplasma or virus because the symptoms can be easily confused with virus. In addition, they are resistant to most antibiotics, but are susceptible to tetracycline. Let's talk about phytoplasma disease symptoms. One of the most important symptoms is stunted and distorted growth. You may see some rolling leaves and eventually turn to be the tree or plant dieback. One of the most uh, famous or important phytoplasma disease is called aster yellow. And you can definitely see that the infection of the phytoplasma triggers some hormonal disorder so that you may have some overgrowth symptoms on the top of the flower, maybe, or uh, whatever you call. And uh, on the soybean, you can, you can see their cluster flower that look definitely abnormal. For the transmission of the disease, this is a brief life cycle of the disease. It was transmitted by insect called leafhopper. They can inject or feed on the plant and acquire the phytoplasma from phloem. And then this phytoplasma can stay in the body of the leafhopper for 20 to 50 days. Once the leafhopper started feeding any other plant, that's how they transmitted those phytoplasma to the healthy plants. Eventually, you will have different types of the symptoms showed up. This is caused big threats to at least canola production. I'm from Florida. I came here in Missouri two years ago. One of my projects working on is lethal yellowing or lethal browning disease. This is also called by a novel phytoplasma reported in 2006. And there are maybe four major palm trees was super susceptible. So basically if the palm tree get this disease, there's a dead end. One of the tree called Canary Island Day Palm, they consider that palm tree as the most beautiful palm tree in Florida. However, this palm tree is also the most susceptible ones. Each palm tree, including the, the cost of the tree itself, as well as installation and maintenance, it's over $15,000.
But once you get the phytoplasma, it will slowly show in, in the lower canopy, then climb on the top. Eventually, it will collapse. Those are the symptoms showing in different type of palm tree. Of course, we don't have palm tree in Missouri, but we do have phytoplasma diseases. We just received a photo from one of my colleagues showing the photo of the rose. We suspect also phytoplasma disease. And you can tell they are definitely have some hormonal disorder producing kind of like overgrowth, a symptom of overgrowth. And there's still some reddish, but still overall, they're a little bit different with the virus. How to tell the difference? Since one is virus, the other is bacteria, we can always go through the molecular techniques to extract the DNA uh, to run the specific assay for identifying phytoplasma. So if you have any question for phytoplasma, uh, let me know. Uh, we do have the assay to test them. The last slide, of course, is disease control. How can we control this disease? Unfortunately, there's no cure like the rose rosette disease. You have to remove the disease plant quickly. I saw lots of a palm tree was cut immediately with a test positive of the phytoplasma in Florida. Control the leaf hopper and other insects, which may be also vectors. Use some resistant plants. Recently, many weeds were identified with phytoplant positive. However, they didn't show up the symptoms. So that makes uh, it even harder to control this disease. So weed control is very important to contain this disease. Uh, there are some chemical method, which is antibiotic injection. Uh, like I said, it is uh, susceptible to tetracycline. And if you have some tree diseases infected by the phytoplasma, it can be used. But if you have a shrub or even the plants like aster yellow, it may be hard to use the antibiotic injection method.